Today we are going to be talking about agar. We're going to be talking about uh, agar in general, why we use it, as well as the ingredients needed, and how to make it. So, um, for agar, I've just been using two, I know they say not to do it, but two mason jars. So, first thing is uh, we've got three different ingredients. We've got uh, agar agar powder. We've got our dry malt extract as well as the nutri nutritional yeast. And the proportions are 20 grams of the barley malt extract, 20 grams of the agar powder, and two grams of the nutritional yeast. So 20 grams of the agar powder. Sorry, and this is, um, these measurements are for 1,000 milliliters of distilled water. of the extract and two grams of the nutritional yeast all right now we're going to just uh, dump that in the pot we're going to mix that with our thousand milliliters i had a bigger measuring cup that did a thousand milliliters but i dropped it on the floor and broke it so We'll just do two 500 mils. And another 500. 1,000. Now we're going to turn that on. You want to bring that to a boil and stir it regularly because you don't want to burn it. After this is ready and uh, simmered for a couple minutes, I will pour it into the jars and we're going to pressure cook that at 15 PSI for 45 minutes. You grow your agar in a dish and as it grows out, you look for the strong parts of it and cut them out and transfer to a new agar dish in the center and let it grow out again. And you continue to do this a few times until you get a monoculture where it's growing out from the center in a very uniform pattern. Um, that's what's the most important. Through my travels, I've learned that if you do a few different transfers of the strongest part of your growth in an agar dish, you do end up with a much stronger, uh, faster colonizing, faster rooting strain. All right, so we're at boiling point. I'm gonna just turn it down for a minute. I think we're pretty good. I'm gonna turn it to simmer. Now, a lot of people are adding food coloring and to their mixes um, for many reasons. It does look more visually appealing. I use it specifically to help define um, one batch of agar to another batch of agar because it's easy to tell them apart with the difference in color. So for this batch here, I'm using a little bit of red. It's a little frothy, but uh, seems to be well mixed. So I've got the 23 quart uh, Presto, not Presto, t uh, pressure cooker going here. I like this one specifically. Um, it's got the gauge at one, two, and three for five, 10, and 15 uh, PSI pressure, as well as the dial for which pressure you want and a, uh, a relief as well, uh, if you want to relieve the pressure. So far, it's been working very well for me. All right, so this is uh, ready to go here. So we're going to pour it equally into our two jars. Now I want to pour as close as I can to the same amount in each jar so that during, after the pressure cooking, during the cooling, they both cool at more or less the same temperature. Uh, I made a mistake last time and one jar was about an inch and a half fuller than the other one. And one cooled much faster than the other one did. So I'm just gonna put our lids on so, you know, it's, I can pick up the jar, but it's definitely loose. Set it to number three, we're gonna turn it on high. 
We're going to let that get up to, uh, we're going to leave it on high until it gets to 15 PSI. When it gets down to 15 PSI, you want to turn it down to, depending on your stove, maybe medium or six uh, for a few minutes. And then again, keep turning it down until, um, you want to turn it down as much as you can until the um, pressure starts to drop a little bit. So you, you only want it as high as you need to to maintain that 15 PSI pressure. All right guys, welcome to the pour. So for this, I got my face mask. I have my spray misting bottle of alcohol. I have my bottle of alcohol, gloves, two paper towels. Now typically, you'll see most people using agar dishes, which are about a four inch diameter round, clear plastic dish. That's about a half an inch thick. And that's what you would typically use to grow out any kind of a culture in, whether it's mycology or otherwise. I saw a couple guys on YouTube who were using these cups. Now the plates can be very expensive when you're going through a lot of cultures. So they were using these condiment cups, which you would get at a fast food restaurant or a takeout of some sort. You know, they fill it up with your ketchup, mustard, whatever. Um, and they were using these things. And I've been using them for like a year and a half. Uh, I started out with the plates and it's a very expensive uh, thing to keep going through. So I saw this and I switched over. It's been a year and a half And I have like a 99% success rate. I, I have almost no contamination ever um, So they've been working absolutely great. Just get them from the dollar store packs of 20 for like a dollar fifty All right, so I've got my jar of agar that has finished sterilizing in the pressure cooker and it's currently still very hot. I use just a laser temperature uh, gauge and works great. So we can see that that's, that's still 143. In my opinion, the ideal temperature is a about 115 degrees, maybe 120 degrees to start pouring. If you pour and it's too hot, because these cups I use are a thinner plastic than the Petri dishes, uh, if it's too hot, it does make it a little bit soft and a little bit more difficult to be able to click the lid onto it. Um, so I find that's the ideal temperature. I also find that once it gets anywhere below 100 or so, it starts to congeal into its uh, jelly-like substance. So you also don't want to wait too long. Small tip, if you do happen to wait too long doing all your prep and it happens to cool down too much, just take it in a pot big enough on the stove and put a little bit of water in the bottom of the pot Put this in and put the lid on, bring it to a boil, turn it down to medium, and just leave it in there for about 10-15 minutes, and it will get it back up to a higher temperature that you can back your way back down again to the 115 or whatever works for you. So in the meantime, let's get our cups ready. So we'll use our first paper towel. This is for just spraying things. I like to just take the bottle, and pour it out to soak the paper towel completely. Now we're gonna wipe down our whole space. I like to just flick my filter a little bit to make sure if there's any bacteria that have settled on there while I wasn't using it. Now a jar is going to do more than 20 cups, the size of the jar that I have, which is a 500 milligram. And it's almost all the way full. But at a dollar fifty per package, oops, I'm gonna clean this first. I can't work while I talk, clearly.
All right guys, so if you saw my other video when I was doing agar to agar transfers, and if you didn't go check it out, I'll leave it at the end of this one up in the corner. Um, but I like to stack them up. So on top of the ones I took the culture from, the bottom one is the new culture. All right guys, so here's a little sneak peek. As you can see, the culture has taken over the whole dish. Cup, I should say. This one is a little bit smaller, so you can tell it's not growing as fast. So make sure you check out that video when I'm gonna transfer these to new agar. So the crazy thing is, we spend so much time, and you'll see in anybody's videos, trying to be so sterile with everything we do. But mushrooms naturally grow in nature, which again, along the side of a trail or randomly in a forest, is not a bacteria-free environment. So it's very interesting how they thrive on their own. Um, we're gonna give this one little shake. So there are better jars to pour, to use and I really need to get some because I don't know if you can see but I keep spilling it everywhere. <laughs> So 39 cups of agar with 500 milliliters of agar. All right guys, so I'm just gonna leave these here stacked up in front of the fan overnight. 